said They're at the start before the beginning of time With no point of reference You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. And if the stars were made to worship so light, I can see your heart in it. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain. Good morning and welcome to Southside Online. I'm just so glad that you're here and here early. My name is Drew. And I'm Jenna. I'm the preschool director here on our Warner Robins campus. And this is Drew, my husband. He already said his name. But he is our children's pastor yes. here on this campus. And we are excited to be back. Um, it was very exciting week here in middle Georgia because something happened this week. What happened this week? Jenna? We had a big, exciting thing happen. Actually, the public schools have started back. We're in full swing now in Houston County. Um, they've just went for a couple of days, but they're all back to school. It's crazy. I've seen thumbs up. Everybody says it was a little awkward and weird. Yes, and I've heard I've heard the term weird a couple times, but I mean, I think everyone's doing a great job. They're staying positive. The kids, the teachers are doing an excellent job. And it's, it sounds like it's going well so far. The hope is that things get a little bit closer to getting back to normal, at least yes. this new normal that we have. And so we're kind of excited about that. But each and every year, we usually start our ministry year along with the school because yes. we know everybody's getting back in town. And the month of July um, is usually a month where Pastor takes a little hiatus he goes on vacation he goes uh, and studies some books he comes back with all these ideas comes back excited and yeah. guess who's back in town Jenna? pastor jerry he is rested hopefully he's ready to go i think you're gonna see that he'll have a lot of energy up there today and we're excited to hear from him and see what he has to say from god's word yes we're in week two of a brand new series Wait. psalms the perfect playlist it's great how the psalms is just a bunch of songs that we get to see mostly by David and he's written some songs to give the thoughts that are going on in his mind yeah, and his dealings with God and yes and so it's very interesting so I'm gonna put you on a, on a you know put you out there real quick and just kind of set you up 
Oh, dear. All right. Let's pretend that you were creating the perfect playlist. Okay. What would be song number one? Song number one. Oh, okay. So this is kind of an oldie, and you're going to laugh because it's not a song that I play a lot in the house, but Travis Tritt, It's a Great Day to Be Alive. Okay. I love that song. See, you grew up all around the world in different places, and I would never have I was a military you. child. Yeah. I've heard you play the song. I'd have never pegged that as your number one go-to Well, song. I've always got rice cooking in the microwave. Okay. <laughs> she does. We got four kids, so we're always good at that. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's get some of our uh, band members out here. Come here. Our worship team. This let's is get Andy, Andy Acosta. All right. Andy, good. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Okay. We're talking about the perfect playlist. You're a musician. I, I suspect you listen to music almost, you know, every day throughout the day. Come. All right. Here's what we need from you. What would be your number one? You can either choose a song or you can choose an artist. What would be your number one person or song on your perfect playlist? Man, I'm going to go blues, and I'm going to go pretty much anything John Mayer. John Mayer! <laughs> it's blues stuff. It's blues stuff. Well, you, you know now why he's married, because the ladies love John Mayer. <laughs> All right, tell us what we're going to hear today uh, in your uh, worship set. Yeah, so uh, we got We Praise You. Um, we're doing a new song called My Testimony, and then uh, we're going to close it with Waymaker. All right, we cannot wait to hear yes. the praise and worship. We hope you guys are enjoying that. Why don't you go get set up? Get on Thanks to your for spot. stopping by. Uh, we've got a, a, a special date that we need to make them aware of yes, as well. Yes, yes, we can't forget to say this. Yes. September 13th. We are re-entering again to have children's ministry in person for all ages and also student ministry. Yes, we're excited to get you guys back on campus if you feel comfortable. We're going to continue doing our online stuff, mm -hmm. but we definitely are going to have our kids' ministry open to where you could drop your kids off. We'll have our student ministry uh, ready to go as well. But that's a month away, Jenna. What can they still continue to yeah, do Yeah, so in the, in the meantime, yeah. because it's still a little bit far away, um, you can go to southside.church and still find all of the weekly resources. Throughout the week, you can take advantage of all of that. Southsidekids.com. We have resources for all ages, birth through fifth grade. We're so excited to be able to still offer that for you. And our student ministries will continue to have services on YouTube. They're going to kick that back on mm -hmm. on their YouTube page. So on Sunday want, evenings. So if you want to get your, kid, your, your students plugged in, that is a great place to get them plugged in. On top of that... We have a trip to announce to them as well. Our middle school and high school will be going to Snowbird. It's an annual trip they do over Labor Day weekend. And we would love, if you've got a student that uh, would love just to kind of get away probably from you, you'd probably want to get rid of that student. They've been in the house a long time. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> but Snowbird is an awesome opportunity for you to do that. Go to southside.church. We would yeah, love you can for find you to all the details in. on there about Snowbird on southside.church. And also, Matt spoke last week. Mm -hmm. um, we've had all kinds of sermons that he's done through the month of July while Pastor was gone. If you've not heard some of those or you want to hear them again or even share them, you can find them on southside.church. You can find them on our Facebook I would say they're page. definitely worth going back again, even if you have already heard them. Yeah, so definitely get plugged back into those things if you've been disconnected a little bit with summer vacation. Yep, but and it we, looks like we're about to start here. I see Bryce in the background getting his camera ready. So, Well, we're really excited about today's service, and we just want to encourage you, whether you're online or whether you're thinking of coming back, stay plugged in. We want to continue to be your church if you have needs. If you have things that you uh, that, that you just need to talk to somebody about, feel free to call us. We would love to continue to minister to you at Southside. Any last words before we kick off this service? I don't think so. We're Again, we're excited. We're ready to go. And I hope that you guys have a great week. Yeah, let's get this thing started. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Or we'll see you at the end of the service, actually. That's right. I'll see you at least. Amen. Come on, let's stand up and worship together. We're going to sing this song out. We praise you. Just praise him as we sing it. Come on.
worth singing about today. We believe that. Come on. Come on, let's testify what our story is from death to life. Come on. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. That's right. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Just can't get over my name is registered in heaven. Oh, my praise belongs to you forever. Come on, sing this out together. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. I got. We'll finish what he started. Our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from day to night. Cause grace rewrote my story. I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Church, this is a part of our service where we talk a little bit about missions and your generosity. Now, we're ending summer going into the fall. Everything's kicking off. However, this past summer through all of our campuses, we were able to give over 2,000 blessing bags out to family in need. That's with some supplies and, of course, food. And we did all this through volunteers of our church in such a great ministry. Over 2,000 bags were delivered. And even more than that, above your tithes and offerings, you gave over $3,000 specifically 
early this summer to that ministry. And from that, we want to say thank you so much for having such a heartbeat for the middle Georgia area and overall for missions around the world. Now, if you're thinking about giving a course right beside me, you can give online at southside.church forward slash give, or of course in all of our campuses in the lobby, we'll be giving kiosk as well. Church, thank you so much for being a generous church locally for the mission of Jesus and of course all over the world. As we stand, can we give God some praise this morning? Thank you, Jesus.
never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop, even when I don't see it, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, 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 you never stop working. Got you a miracle worker. You're a healer, you're a deliverer. You give us joy when we're down, God. You can heal broken hearts. You can heal diseases. You can heal pandemics. You can heal viruses. God, all the power is in your hand. That's why we sing to you this morning, declaring your praises because you are worth every part of our praise. And we love you. I thank you for every person here. God, give us ears to hear your words. God, give us eyes to see who you are. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jerry Walls, and I am one of the pastors here at Southside who have, have not preached in a little bit, so uh, I am glad to be back. I've actually enjoyed listening to uh, Pastor Matt preach so much that I, I didn't know if I wanted to come back or not. I kept getting fed by him, and I go, goodness gracious, I've I got to find a place to step in. Uh, they'll never let me back if he keeps preaching like this. He's doing such a great job so anyhow uh, we're back hadn't really been gone I've been here almost every service but one and uh, I've enjoyed what God is doing well you know today uh, there are a lot of families uh, in our church that are, are mourning uh, uh, and uh, it's because they've taken their kids off to college and dropped them off is there anybody in this group that you, you ha you've had to do that this week anybody done that most of, most of them are at home crying. Uh, my, my own granddaughter, Kenzie Matt's uh, daughter, they took her up to Georgia Tech. And, uh, you know, what a miracle. Whoever thought of Walls would get into Georgia Tech. Uh, we're, we're just rejoicing. But uh, pray, if you would, for Matt and Robin and uh, for their sibling, her siblings. We're excited about what God is doing. Now, I, 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 I'm going to scold you just for a moment. Y'all ready? Hang on, okay. When Pastor Billy said we had given over 2,000 blessing bags into our neighborhoods, you sat there like, now is that the proper response when, you, when you, we talk about how we have been able to bless people? What, what, what do we do when we talk about, hey, we were able to give 2,000 blessing bags out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. We're hopefully more dead than alive here. And, and by the way, by the way, just just give you something to, to encourage us about. Most of you have heard about the, the bombing in uh, uh, Beirut, Lebanon, all right? We actually have some people on the ground there that we have been sending money to, and we plan on sending some more money to help them because those folks are in a lot of trouble, not our missionaries, but the folks, there's been a lot of suffering going on. So we're going to do something about that. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we're going to do that. So let's rejoice in what, what God is uh, doing around here. Instead of kind of being like we're just shy Baptists. That we never have clapped our hands before in our life. Well, I, how many of you heard Pastor Matt's uh, message last Sunday? Let me see your hand. All right. And I know there are a lot of you that are online and you were probably raising your hands but uh you know what he talked about was psalm chapter one and he talked about how to be ridiculously happy now how many of you like being happy right i mean i'd lot rather be happy than sad right he talked about how to be ridiculously happy but before i get into that he shared his playlist i'm gonna tell you something matt was raised in a christian home and when he was being raised, let me tell you something. He listened, he listened to artists like this. These are renowned, famous artists. Gold City. <laughs> Cathedrals. 
the Florida boys, the Kingsman. Can I have an amen? amen. So how many of you have, have no clue who I'm talking about right now? Yeah, I, I, I understand. These were all Southern gospel artists. But then Matt went off to college. And he had this guy by the name of Drew Cook as his roommate. And for those of you who don't know who Drew Cook is, Drew is our children's pastor. And uh, I would like to say that most of uh, Matt's problems came from Drew when it comes to this. But I think he was just waiting for somebody to introduce him to what he considered was good music. Talked about all those heathen groups he listened to. But anyhow... Now, how many of you are 60 and over in this group right here? Let me, if you're 60 and over, well, not, not a whole lot of us, but back in the day. And I know when you, hear that, when you hear that from your daddy or your grandpa, you're going, oh, really? Are we fixing to go there? Back in the day, we made playlists. But our playlist back in the day, we used cassette recorders. Now, how many of you have never seen a cassette recorder? Let me see your hand. I know there's some of you. No? Well, we would take our cassette recorder, and we would stand by the radio, and as soon as the song came on that we liked, we would hit record, and we would, play that, we would record that song. Right? I mean, that's what we did. And then if somebody had a 45, by the way, not a gun, <laughs> a 45 record, we would go by their house, and they would put it on their record player, and they would play it, and we would record it, and that, that's how we got our playlist together. And we would make this cassette, and we would write on it what it was, and we would stick it, you know, in the cassette player in the car, and we would do our jamming as we were riding through uh, town. Now, some of you are going, man, I sure am glad iTunes is around. I'm sure glad I don't have to do those things before, but, you know, I, I, I tell people, and, and, and those people who are my age, I, I grew up when there was real music. Amen. One of those. <laughs> uh, hello. I don't, know, I don't know exactly how to do all that, but I just know there's a. <laughs> Mikey, you want to help me? <laughs> he says, you're on your own, Pawpaw. <laughs> there is no way in the world. But you know, everybody thinks they grew up, they think their generation was the best music. That's just, that's just the way it was. I mean, you know, uh, like Matt, I mean, he, 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 he listens to that 80s music and he thinks, man, this was the bomb. You should have been around in the 60s. That was when there was real music. You had groups like The Temptation. And you know, they would sing, my girl. I guess you'll say, what can make me feel this way, my girl? Yeah, I mean, boy, we, we had it, man. We, we had it, and, and we had the Supremes, and we had Smokey Robinson. We had the Four Tops. We had Stevie Wonder. What an amazing artist. Uh, Junior Walker, Marvin Gaye. Can't sing any of Marvin Gaye's songs, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Ray Charles. Again, just an amazing uh, man. And, and, and then there were some that I don't, even have, I don't think I have pictures of, but Otis Redding and Percy Sledge and uh, Booker T and the MGs. By the way, Booker T and the MGs, they didn't really sing. They just played musical instruments. And man, they were, well, never mind. I'm just going to leave it there. But, and, and then, of course, there were, the, the, there were the other groups. I don't have the pictures of them, but these were some of my favorite groups also. And, and I was lost, by the way. I want to I preface all about what I'm saying is I was lost. You understand? Now, I'm not saying I don't listen to some of this now, but I was lost. I got another playlist now. But back in the day, some of you, some of you, Three Dog Night. Any of you heard of Three Dog Night? Yeah, Three Dog Night, Grand Funk Railroad, Bee Gees. They're still around. Well, they're all dead. I think they all just finally died. But the, 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 the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, hey. And it, one of my favorite groups early on uh, was, was the Beach Boys. I mean, you know, let's go surfing now. Everybody's learning how. Come on a safari with me. <laughs> You're dying, aren't you, son? You're just dying over there. I'm telling you. There are so many other groups. But, you know, now, now I, 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 I listen to this some, but, man, I have my playlist now. 
is basically what we listen to on Sunday morning. Man, I, I love, I love our music. I, I, I love our, our praise team. You know, I, I love songs like Holy Water, uh, Graves to Garden, Waymaker. Man, is that not an awesome song? Back a, a, a year or so ago, we, we sang and probably need to sing some more in the eye of the storm. Recently, there's that new song, Rattle. I, I love that so much. And I, I could go on and on. But, you know, God has a playlist. And, and that's the book of Psalms. And, and just so you'll know this, the book of Psalms was actually five different books put together, five playlists put together and, and, and given to us. And David did not write all the Psalms, just in case you think he did. A lot of times people say, well, David wrote all the Psalms. He didn't write all the Psalms. Now, he wrote most of the Psalms, and he, he probably wrote most of the familiar songs, but David did not write all the song, Psalms there. But before I get into Psalms 3, which is where I'm going to go, so if you, if you have your, your Bible or your iPad or, you know, your, your phone that you're going to read along with us, uh, you can turn there, but I, I, I wanted to repeat something that Matt said because I thought it was so powerful, and I love what he had to say. In Psalm 1, 1, it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But listen to this. He says, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. You know, Matt Matt preached to us last week that, you know, we need to start reading scriptures for ourselves. We, we need to, we don't, we need to make sure that we read it for the right reason. We, we need, and he said this, do you read the Bible out of duty or delight? You know, when I read these words and I heard him read these words, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night, uh, Back in my early ministry days, I, I heard a preacher talk about meditating on the Word. Now, uh, I don't know if we've got any uh, farmers in here. I don't see my, some of my resident farmers here. But uh, how many of you have ever seen a cow chew his cud? You, do you know what I'm talking about? You, you watch, an old, uh, watch an old cow chew his cud, and I, I'm not going to try to imitate it, but I mean, he just had a mouth going, mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm going to tell you something. What, did you know a cow has two stomachs? A cow has two stomachs. And so he'll, he'll chew on something for a while and push it down to the second stomach. And then later on, when he thinks about it, he'll bring it back up and chew on it again. Now, I know what some of you are going. But you know, that's the way we ought to be with the Word of God. That's what to meditate on, it, on His Word is. We, we, we don't just eat it and, and leave it alone. We, we chew on it and we swallow it and then we let it come back again. And we, we, we get involved in the word of God again. Well, in, in 2 Samuel chapter 3, this particular song or psalm was written in a, a very difficult time of David's life. In fact, if you have, if you have your Bible or, or maybe uh, what you're reading from, uh, the introduction simply says before you come to the Psalm 1, it says, a psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. Now you think about that. This was written in a very difficult time of his life. In fact, let's, let's, notice, let's notice what David uh, writes here in Psalm 3 in verse number 1. He said, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Now let me just pause for a moment. He said, Lord, how they have increased that trouble me. Now David had all the outside enemies you would want. I mean, there, there were people outside his kingdom that wanted to destroy him and Israel. But now, all of a sudden, there is not only external strife coming his way, but now there is this internal strife. And this internal strife comes from what we would consider the most unusual place that strife could come from. It is coming from his own son. Now, let's just be honest. Having enemies is not unusual, but having your own flesh want to take your life 
and literally take over your life and take over your kingdom. When David says how they have increased that troubled him, he wasn't kidding. Now, Absalom rebelled against David. By the way, Absalom uh, had been, actually, David had sent Absalom out of the kingdom for some time because Absalom had actually killed one of David's other sons who had, who had actually raped one of the sisters. But David could not put up with murder, and so he said, you've got to leave. Finally, he invites him back, and now for four years, Absalom comes, and he's this guy who goes to the city gates, and he begins to talk to the people about, hey, you know, if I were king, this is how I would do it. And then one day, one day, he presents his plan, and the people agree. And the Bible says in 2 Samuel 15, 13, Now a messenger came to David saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. Now this is King David we're talking about. This is the guy that killed Goliath. This is the guy that united the kingdom. And now all of Israel, literally this is what it means. In fact, if you were to look at that scripture, it would really say in some text, all the hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. Of course, when David heard that, he knew that not only was his life in danger, those closest to him were in danger. Because back, back in these days, when you took over somebody's kingdom, you know what you did? You purged. Everybody else. You, you, you ended everybody else's lives. And so here's what David did in verse number 14. It says, so David said to all of his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, arise and let us flee or we shall not escape from Absalom. Make haste to depart lest he overtake us suddenly and bring disaster upon us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. Wow. And then verse 2 says this. This this. This is really, really a, a sad verse. It says, many are they who say of me. David says, it, it looks like all Jerusalem is talking about me. There is no help for him. Even his God will not help him. You know, that's, that's I, I suppose, one of the saddest phrases that could be said of any of us is there is no hope for him even in God now you know here's as, as I read this I began to think I'm sure there are many who are listening to my voice right now who are hearing people say the same words about you there are many of you here, you know this, they've said the same words about you in the past. Now, let me tell you about this phrase. It's one of the biggest lies Satan tells us. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how far you've gotten away from God. There's always help. Come on now. No matter how far you get away from God, there's always help. Yeah, there's always help. In fact, I love the song we sang this morning, My Testimony. I believe that's the first time that we, we sang this song. It, it says this. I love this. He says, if, if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are yet to come. Now, I know some of you sitting out there think, you know, I have messed up my life. There is no way in the world that I can ever get my life back. That's a lie from God. And we'll see this. By the way, at the end of this verse, verse 2 ends with the word Selah. Selah. And, 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 and people will argue perhaps on what the word Selah means, but many believe it's kind of a, a, a musical word that literally means to pause. 
And, and many Bible scholars believe that as you read this verse, it means to pause and reflect on what is being said. And as we pause and think on what was just said, let us remember it's not true. Now, David goes on to write, and this is what I love. They've said to him, hey, David, there's no hope for you. Now, I, I, hey, come on. Has anybody ever said that about you? Oh, you, you're not going to testify. You're not going to raise your hand. But you know there has been. I know there was a time people that looked at Jerry Walls and said, mm-mm, he'll never make it. But here's what the Bible says. Look, look what David said. David said, you may say this about me. But here is the truth right here. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. Hello? And then he says, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. Boy, we have, we have two different ideas going here, don't we? We have this group of people that said, oh, you'll never make it. You're worthless. You've already messed up your life. Nothing can help you out now. But then you have God coming along and said, hey, don't you think about that. I'm going to be your shield. And that word shield, by the way, is not just a frontal shield. You are surrounded, the Bible says. You know, I, I love this. You are a shield for me. That is, you are my protector. My protector. You know, I love David, does, David uses this, this word shield. It's a metaphor for his protection. David uses this, this word shield many times. In Psalm 1830, it says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield. Notice, to who? To all who trust him. He goes on to write in Psalm 84, verse 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. I love this. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. By the way, that word Lord, that word Lord is the word Jehovah in the Hebrew, and it means the God who keeps his word. And so when David said, the Lord is my shield, that word Lord, David David knew that God was going to keep the promise that he had made to him way back when he was just a shepherd boy. And when David was just a shepherd boy, God had promised him that his kingdom would last forever. And David was holding on to that promise. You know what we need to do, folks? Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. Things, can, things are tough right now. Th things could get tougher. But you know, we've got to hold on to the promises of God. We've got to hold on to them. Because I'm going to tell you something, the person who made those promises is the person that can be trusted in. You know, I, I love, it says, my glory. And the English Standard Version says, the, my glory and the lifter of my head. Have you ever noticed what happens when a guy fails miserably? And he's confronted with it and he, people are trying to help him. He won't look you in the eye. Right? He won't look you in the eye. I mean, his head is just, it's just pushed down. The weight of what he's done, it, it just causes him to push down. He can't look people in the eye because he knows that he's sinned. She knows that he's sinned. But here's what David said. God is my glory. And he's the one that comes and he lifts my head up. Why? Wow. So God and him can look each other in the eye. By the way, this passage tells us that, that David was just as susceptible to being ashamed of his past as we are. And David had a terrible past. You know, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. And then he got her husband, Uriah, and tried to trick him, and it didn't work. So he sent him to the battlefield where he'd have him killed. You know your past. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I want you to listen to me. 
Satan loves to remind us of our past. Hello? Now, I, I know that this that you were all good Baptists and good Christians and you know, you hadn't got anything that in your past that you're ashamed of. But you know what? There are a few of us in here that do. And the devil loves to bring that past up at the most inopportune times. In fact, you can be driving down the road and you can be listening to the to, to best Christian music in all the world. And all of a sudden, it's like the devil will come and say, you remember when you did this? <laughs> and I am so glad that I can, I can say to the devil, yes, I do remember. But do you remember when God forgave me? Oh, little Richard. I don't know where he is and what he's doing, or, but I know what he, he preached for a little while. And he said basically this. He said, when God when Satan reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. That's good preaching right there. I don't care who you are. Now, here's what David is writing to us. This is what David said. And these are some truths we've got to catch up to. We need to get our eyes off our hardships. We get our eyes off our problems. And we've got to get our eyes off our past. And you know what? We've got to get our eyes on who? God. Now, here's the truth. Focusing on our failures is never the answer. And all God's people said, focusing on our failures is not the answer. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You have to deal with your failures. You have to confess. You have to repent. But focusing on your failures is never the thing to do. I love this, and I wish I had highlighted it for you. But we must never let our failures determine our future. And you know what? Some of you right now in this room, you are being tied down to your past failures, and you're letting your past failures determine what you can do in the future, and it should not be so. And I love what David writes in in verse number 4. He says this. He said, I cried to the Lord with my voice. And he heard me (laughs) from his holy hill. And there's that word Selah again. Now remember what Selah meant? It means pause and reflect. Is this not something that we need to pause and think about? Is this not something we need to pause and rejoice about? Is, Is this not something that ought to make us want to get up off on our feet and so glory to God hallelujah I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill by the way notice who he cried to he didn't cry to himself he didn't cry to his family he cried to the Lord man it said there is no hope for you David But our text says he cried to the Lord and he heard him from his holy hill. I love that. He heard me. You know, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible is Psalm 34, 4. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You know, when I think about this, it just reminds me that the grace of and mercy of God are beyond comprehension. How can God maybe even say, why would God forgive me, forgive you for our past, but that's who God is. And here's A great truth. God promises to meet the heart that is the person that cries out to him. You've you've got something that's got a hold of you. You've got something that you're ashamed of. You know what? You cry out to God and you give it to him. 
Because of this truth, by the way, because he knew that he had a God who was compassionate and a God who was caring and a God who would just forgive, he writes these words. He says, now, again, he's on the run from his son. He's only uh, spent one night, people believe, out in the wilderness when he wrote this. But he says this, I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of peoples who have set themselves against me all around. What an attitude. See, that's what happens though when man, you meditate on God's word and you trust in him. He said, I laid down and rest. I laid down and slept. And the only reason he could lay down and sleep because the Lord sustained him. Look, we must not give in to fear no matter how strong the temptation is. How appropriate is this text for today's world? Now, Moment of truth. How many of you have had moments where you had a hard time sleeping because of what's going on in this world today? Anybody be like that? Come on, you're not being unspiritual when you raise your hand. Believe me. I'm afraid, and I'm speaking to you, but I'm speaking to those who are listening to me. I'm afraid we are living in a day when we're letting the fear of COVID-19 control our lives. Now, before anybody who's listening to me gets the wrong idea, it's real. You hear me? It's real. I buried people I love who died of COVID-19. I have had friends who got it and got very sick, who had COVID-19. But here's what I don't want us to do. I do not want us to be fearful, nor do I want us to be foolish. I want us to live our lives the way that we need to live our lives while we are careful in doing just that. And in saying all that, let me just say this. After Labor Day, the Sunday after Labor Day, we're, we're going to get this place going full speed ahead. Children, youth, etc. unless we learn better between now and then. We're going to take every precaution we need to take, but I'm going to just tell you something. We are not going to be those who are fearful, while at the same time we're not going to be those who are foolish. You know... I, I, I know people, literally, that they are so afraid right now. Fear is wrong. Now, listen, there's nothing wrong with being wise, but don't be fearful. In fact, I, I love this. I read this this week. Giving into fear is inviting the enemy into your home. And what he wants to do, he wants to handicap us. He wants to keep us under his thumb. And I'm just going to tell you, and again, I just don't speak to you. I speak to those listening to me. We need to repent of fear. Because here's what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And when we fear we forget who is in control. Hang on a minute. Woo, that's good preaching, preacher. You go right ahead and let it out. Okay. You're not going to amen me. I'm just going to amen myself. I don't have any problem. You're just going to be here longer. Isaiah 41, verse number 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will withhold you with my righteous right hand. 
Now, please don't go here and say, hey, the preacher told us we didn't need to wear a mask. The preacher said we didn't need to wash our hands. The preacher said we didn't need to social distance. I didn't say that. Are you listening to me? I'm just saying don't be fearful. Trust in the Lord. Then David closes out this psalm. And I, this is his confidence. He says, he says, arise, O Lord, save me. Oh, my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. And then he says this. This is, this is so amazing. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. See that word again? Selah. What's that mean? Pause and reflect. Think about what's being said here. By the way, that, that word salvation, that word salvation literally means deliverance. Your deliverance, your hope is in one person, and that's the Lord. Now, let's just let's draw back for a moment and think about the lessons that we need to learn. Number one, never lose hope. Remember, if you're not dead, God's not through with you. Number two, we must cry out to the Lord and realize that he will hear us. And he will be the one that lifts up our head. Then we must remember fear is our enemy. And we know that's a song, don't we? Fear is our enemy and we must not let it control our Let me close with a question, big question. What causes you to have sleepless nights? Now, I'm going to ask this question again. Any of you had any sleepless nights during these days? Come on. You know you have. What causes you to have sleepless nights? Is it sickness? Not, maybe not your sickness. Maybe it's your parents' sickness. Maybe it's your children's sickness. Maybe it's a best friend's sickness. What keeps you up? Is it a family crisis? Maybe, maybe in this day and age, and the Lord knows this can true. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe, maybe you've come to the end of, of what you have, and you don't know what is going to happen. And maybe, maybe, maybe some of you have have not slept because there's just been all this unjust criticism come into your life. Well, here's what I want you to remember. I want you to read this with me. Come on, ready? But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. All right, let's read it again. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. Hey, one more time, and you're going to read it, and I'm going to be quiet. Ready? But. You believe that? Let's bow in a word of prayer. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. And I know there are some of you that are here and some of you who are listening to me that, that right now, Man, your head is dragging. Let me just tell you something. God is here for you. And as David cried out to the Lord, if we cry out to the Lord, he is there to offer forgiveness. My concern this morning is is those who may be here or who are listening to my voice by way of the internet, you don't know Jesus. You don't know Jesus. I want to encourage you. If you don't know Jesus, turn to him. Turn to him. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. You say, I don't know how. It's simple. You know, you, you, you tell God, God, I know I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. 
And I ask Jesus, your son who died on the cross to come into my heart to be my savior. I believe what he did and I receive that. And I surrender my life. Lord, I let go of everything and ask you to save me. In fact, you can pray a simple prayer like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know Christ died for my sins. And I ask you right now, Jesus, because not only did you die, but you rose from the dead and you are in heaven right now. I ask you to come into my life and to be my Lord and Savior. I surrender everything I am to you. Please save me. Let me just say, if you prayed that prayer this morning, whether you're here or you're listening, God came into your heart and he saved you. The very next thing he wants you to do is he wants you to let people know that you made that decision. And so if you're watching online, please let us know. You can text our church. Hopefully they'll have a number there for you to text. Not only that, you can write in the comment section of wherever you're watching, today I trusted Christ. We need to know these things. And let me say, there are some of you, by the way, you have been saved, and it's time for you to get baptized. I'm going to tell you something. I hope that some of you will come forward today, and you'll say, hey, I need to be baptized, and let our pastors know, and let us set up some of that. And maybe some of you need to come and join our church. Maybe some of you just need to come and rededicate your life. But this morning in the invitation, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. More than anything else, if you've been struggling, I want you to come and cry out to the Lord. And say, but thou, O Lord, you are my shield and my strength. Help me during this time. Would you stand with me right now with your heads bowed and your eyes closed? As you come to the altar, if you come to the altar, I would ask you to practice social distancing when you come. But I'm going to tell you something. If you trusted Christ as your Savior, I just need you to come and stand up here. Or if you need to talk about something, stand up here and we'll have some people here to deal with you. But I want you to move. If God is speaking, I want you to move right now. I want you to come. Lay your burden here at the altar and do business with God. Would you do that? Right now, just leave your seat as I begin to pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I know there are heartache, there's hurt. There's some here who are defeated. But God, you have promised to be the lifter of our head. And so, God, I just pray today many would be restored. Many would be, many would receive forgiveness and experience victory. And Lord, for those today that perhaps even prayed to receive you as Christ, I pray that they would come not being ashamed, God, of the decision that they made. And for those who have been saved and not been baptized, for those who have been coming to the church and not joined, Lord, I pray that you'd begin to work in their heart. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your goodness. Bless our time of commitment to you. I pray in Jesus' name. Our praise team is going to sing. As they sing, would you come? I will not fear, for you are with me. I've seen this fight from the victory. the victory.
make a couple of announcements let me just remind you after Labor Day we're gearing back up we're starting up our children's ministry our youth ministry and uh, we need volunteers we have a lot of volunteers that unfortunately because of their age and the fact that they have an immune system that is just not up to date we we need volunteers there's a place to sign up out in the lobby if you can help all right by the way parents of teenagers we are going to snowbird uh, on I think it's the Labor Day weekend, uh, Pastor Dennis, in that correct Labor Day weekend. Uh, you can sign up online, and uh, again, we just need volunteers for our children's ministry. And just so you'll know this, uh, we love Awanas here. We've had Awanas for 35, 36 years. Right now, the majority of our Awana workers have been older individuals. We want to bring in more volunteers so we can start up our Awana ministry as soon as possible. Just pray, pray, pray about that, all right? Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the decisions that have been made. We thank you for the hope that you've given people. Lord, we thank you so much that we can cry out to you and you will hear our voice. God, we ask you now to just dismiss us with your blessings. And may you have been pleased with not just the preaching, but the listening. And not just the listening, but the responses. Lord, we ask you to help us to go this week and be believers who shine like the sun on your behalf. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, Southside, we're so glad that you tuned in today, and uh, we hope that you got a blessing out of that. I asked Pastor Jerry to come over here. He's going to come over here in a minute and talk to us. But thanks again for tuning in, and Pastor Jerry. Hey, buddy. It is so good to have you back. Ooh, it felt good to be back. Well, even though you threw me under the bus. <laughs> no, you, you were <laughs> under the bus already. Yeah, I was kind of under the bus. <laughs> but I want to know, we were talking about Psalm, this, this perfect playlist. I want to know your pre-Jesus number one on your perfect playlist. It was probably like I, I kind of made a fool of myself. It was it was probably my girl about the temptations. Uh, I mean, because you know, I mean, it's just one of those songs. It's it's just a good. Oh, it's awesome. And I'm from Detroit. My dad, he he taught me Motown. So right. He, he he probably did a couple two steps Motown. I bet he did. I'm throwing him under the bus. Well, anyways, we're going through a rough season. We know there's people that are watching right now online. And uh, they've gone through great loss. Maybe they feel a little bit like King David with Absalom. They've been stabbed in the back by somebody close to them. Absolutely. Uh, they're going through health issues. And I love in Psalm 3, 2, how David is feeling that pressure. And uh, what would you say to those people right now as we close out the service? Well, you know, the, the song, My Testimony, it just says, if, 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 if I'm not dead, God's not through. And, 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 and beyond that, I think that maybe it's more important than that, that we have a God that's sitting there waiting for us to run to Him, and He is ready to lift up our heads and to restore us. Yeah, and that's a great message to hear, especially in this time and day. If you're watching online, we want to be your church. Yes. We want to, you to know that we love you, we miss you, whether you're a, a mile away or thousands of miles away. If you have a need, let us know. We want to be your church. We want to help you. And when you're feeling comfortable and you're nearby, Come and visit us in person. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week, and we'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.